Hi, welcome to my video. I made this for my friend Sam, but anyone, I hope you are able to take away some good home exercises to do from anywhere. I'm gonna walk you through just five workout circuits and you can just repeat the circuits for as many weeks as you'd like. Hope you find this helpful and enjoy. Alright, so day one is gonna be legs. We're gonna start with my favorite, just do your basic squat. Um, the form on this one, you're just gonna keep your spine straight and dig into the ground with your heels. Should be a slow and controlled movement. And just make sure you're looking straight ahead. And we're gonna try to go for starting with 10 reps and then as the week goes on, you should be able to do more. I would say increase the reps maybe by one or two, however you're feeling per week, but just make sure that you are activating your quads, and you know, this is just a classic, so. All right, moving on, we are going into um, leg abductions, I guess you could call them. Basically, you're just gonna grip like a wall, or I find that a dresser or like a high um, like torso length surface works good too. And you're just gonna extend your leg outward, 12 reps on each side. I can't remember what I said, but 12 reps, 12 to 15 is a good rep range for like a body weight exercise that's generally low weight. Um, just alternate. Okay, moving on. We're gonna do some fire hydrant kicks or donkey kicks and then extend out into a back leg lift or a leg extension. I'm not really sure, I kinda just make up names as I go. But this one is a good one for the booty. So we're gonna go out with the leg and then come back in and then go straight back and up. Squeeze the glute to get you know that glute activation slow and controlled movements and then we're gonna switch over to the next side this one will burn like it's an underrated exercise in my humble opinion and then I would aim for 12 to 15 reps on this one as well and then um, on the back kick it does help to point your toes rather than keeping them flexed that'll just help with the direction and the balance of the position. Alright, next we're gonna do some hip thrusts, which is another great compound movement. Um, start out with the body weight, and then as you progress and get more comfortable with the form and the movement, you can try to add a weight for some added resistance or a resistance band. Um, you're gonna keep your spine nice and straight on this one. Keep your eyes straight ahead, or for me, I'm watching Netflix, so you could do that too, I guess. And you're just going to keep your legs, or keep your feet straight and drive up with, through your heels. So you're pretty much just squeezing the glutes. And then finally, we have some backwards lunges, which is another great staple. You're gonna start from a standing position and then just lunge back. Uh, slow and controlled so that you stay balanced and keep your form nice and tight. Look straight ahead, spine straight, you don't have to like bend over or anything. Just nice and controlled squat or um, lunge, sorry. And then again with this one you can add weight as you get more comfortable with the exercise. Um, just doing a body weight I would aim for like 12 reps is a good range. Okay, moving on to day two, which is gonna be upper body. So we're gonna start out with some arm circles. This is a really good activation exercise to start off with. And I would say either count to like 50 or so, or just set a timer for starting with maybe 30 or 45 seconds and then increasing the time as you go on throughout the weeks. Um, so as you can see, I kind of did, I did forward circles and then stopped halfway and then switched to backward circles. 
second, we're gonna go into plank shoulder taps. So you're gonna be in a um, standing plank position. Um, when you're just starting out, you can go to your knees, that's fine. Just slow and controlled. Try to keep your core tight. This is a good one for activating the core as well. You're just gonna alternate tapping your shoulder. Looking down will help keep your balance on point. Then just go ahead and grab whatever you have laying around. This is just like a little cookie tin. Sam, you mentioned like a gallon of milk. That would be perfect. Um, this is, I tend to stay around five to 10 pounds. So definitely on the lighter side. And you're just gonna bring the weight up into a little bicep curl and then out, which will kind of uh, put some stress on the shoulders. And you can do this standing up too. I just did it kneeling to stay in the frame of the video. All right, so this one is another really good one that I like to do for the shoulders. It's a military press or just an upward shoulder press. So grab your weights and pretty simple. You're gonna start with it by your chest and then just bring it straight up. Keep your spine nice and straight and make sure you're only using uh, your shoulders instead of relying on momentum. Alright, and then we're going to do a classic push-up. So I did a modified version just because I have limited space and I think this is more beginner friendly and it really helps you work on your form. So keep that spine straight. Even if you are on your knees, it's still very important to keep a level back. Okay, moving on to day three, which is a core slash ab day. We're going to start with some Russian twists. You can add a weight or just any object if it helps you stay balanced. And make sure that you're turning your head and your gaze along with your, your core because that will help you make a full, um, full movement, full range of motion. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, now we're going to do some butterfly kicks. This one, bear with me, okay? It's going to be hard, but you just stick with it and push through the pain. As you can see, just point your toes and just go within like a foot or so, just alternating that little kick. Then we're gonna do an upward crunch. Um, this is a good one that I like to do because you can kind of feel it in the obliques and you're standing, which is a nice change of pace because a lot of ab exercises you're laying down. But you're just gonna bring your alternating elbow to your, sorry, your elbow to your alternating knee and look down as well. Same with the Russian twist. When you look where you're kind of moving, it'll help you get that full range of motion. Alright, then we're gonna do a crunch and I actually love crunches because I can't do a sit-up. Sad, but whatever. So a really good tip for crunches is you're gonna keep your gaze pointed at the ceiling. So look up the whole time and your elbows are straight out. Don't bring them into your ears. Keep them straight out and you're just gonna focus on lifting your shoulder blades off the ground. So up towards the ceiling, not towards your knees. Make sure you're just kind of doing a little upward motion. Okay, then we're gonna do some penguin taps, penguin touches, penguin crunch, whatever. Um, lay on the ground, lift your neck up so your shoulders are off the ground, and you're just gonna alternate tapping your ankles. Pretty simple, but it, will give you a nice burn. All right, and then we have another leg day because this little plan is gonna emphasize the legs because Sam comes from soccer, so she's got strong legs already. So we're gonna start with some kickbacks. Um, go get yourself like a windowsill or a little table or something, and you're just gonna bring your leg all the way back, try to get it um, about as high as your spine, so you're like, Hard, angles are hard, but you're just gonna bring your heel up so that, you know, it looks like a straight line with your spine. You should feel that in the glutes and the upper hamstring. Alright, then we're gonna do sumo squats. This one is another really good one just to get used to with the form. 
Um, again, drive into the floor with your heels to come up. And you can add a weight if you're feeling spicy. That will definitely make you sweat, I promise. I mean, like I still don't like squatting at home because I get sweaty. Weird little anecdote, but squats are hard, okay? Wow, I did a lot of squats here. Wow. Okay, then we're gonna do a glute bridge. So this is like a hip thrust, but you're completely laying on the ground. Um, keep your arms completely straight on the ground, and then you're just gonna raise your hips. And then I do a little glute, or um, what's that called? Hip abduction, just to add a little, a little bit of fun into the movement. If you have a glute, glute resistance band you can put that above the knees as well that'll add some resistance obviously but this is just fine too when you're doing the hip abduction make sure you're keeping your feet flat on the ground um, I mean you can see that I kind of bring my feet outwards it's fine just keep your heels kind of grounded and then we are going to move on to a Bulgarian split oh my god Bulgarian split squat. So this is another really great compound exercise and I talk about this on Instagram a lot but there are basically two different variations that you can do. A more narrow stance is going to put more emphasis on the hamstrings while a wider stance is going to put more emphasis on the quads and you can see more examples of that on my Instagram leg days but this one is kind of a more neutral like quad focused just a you know basic movement go where you feel comfortable and we're gonna go all the way down making a little 90 degrees 90 degree angle with our legs add weight when you can but body weight is fine too and then Sam's favorite a wall sit so I didn't add like a little rep thing to the beginning to the intro of this segment because the wall sit was included so you know, just, just um, track your own personal progress. So like, start with 30 seconds and then maybe try to add 5 or 10 seconds every week. Alright, finally, day 5. It's going to be some hit. So I only have 4 exercises for you for this one, but um, play around with it. When I do hit, which is not often, I pretty much just like think of what exercises to do on the spot. Um, there are a lot of jumping around ones, but there are, you can also find some good hit exercises that are non-jumping if you're not comfortable with jumping or if you're like live on an, in an apartment with downstairs neighbors, whatever. Um, hit basically the only goal is to have your heart rate in the in a cardio zone for the whole time. Hit stands for high intensity interval training. So like at the intro of the video, I said 45 seconds on and then 15 seconds off. So that rest part, that 15 seconds of rest is really important because it kind of brings your heart rate back down before you spike it up again with the next exercise, which is where the calorie burning and the work is coming from. And then HIT is not a long exercise. So 12 or 15 to 20 minutes is a good HIT time zone to aim for. Um, I basically didn't explain any of these exercises, but I feel like they're kind of self-explanatory. This one is probably going to be the hardest. It's the lunge jumps. You can just do regular lunges until you feel comfortable with the jumping. I know it takes a lot of coordination and practice, so don't worry if it is a struggle at first. Okay, so that is it. Here's some random clips of food while I end this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that informative. Um, obviously it was just five workouts, but you can repeat them however many times you like or just take the two days of rest. Okay, bye. Love you.